The Migration and Development Research Group at UNU Merit and the School of Governance is one of the key thematic areas that we work on here at the Institute. We are comprised of about 30 people currently working in the area and we work on 10 thematic areas. These include various different areas. For instance, the first is on forced migration, security, and conflict. In this area, we work on things such as um, the Syrian crisis, looking at diaspora engagement in Syria. Also things like um, Burundi and Rwanda, the, the conflict and displacement that's happened there, and how this affects labor market outcomes, education, etc., etc. Another key thematic area for us is on integration, social cohesion, and transnationalism. And here we do a lot of work in Europe, for instance, particularly in the Netherlands, looking at immigrants in the Netherlands and uh, both their engagement in the Netherlands and in their countries of origin. Our third thematic area is on return, remittances, diaspora, and development. So this is a big key thematic area for us. Um, it encompasses quite a bit of the work that we do. Our big IS Academy on Migration and Development falls um, solely, definitely within this thematic area. And here we're looking at the effects of return, remittances, diaspora, very much on development back in the country of origin. And we look especially at um, development at a more micro level, especially human development and multidimensional poverty. That's absolutely an approach that we very often take here within this thematic cluster. The fourth area where we work is on migration governance and policy coherence. This is a big emerging area globally, and we are currently working on indicators to measure policy coherence in migration and development in different countries, which we hope that this will be used globally, and we're currently piloting this in 10 countries. Our next thematic area is in migration and health. This is a big new emerging area where migration scholars have not often gotten involved and we've really made a, a big push in this area now. One of our key things that we're doing is working on demographic and health surveys um, to look at how migration actually affects health outcomes, health knowledge, um, and different types of, uh, of usage of, uh, for instance, comp contraception. Um, another key area for us is on migration and corruption, and you can think about corruption here very holistically, so we can think about bribes, extortion, uh, um, and many other types of corrupt activities. Here we're looking at the um, engagement of migrants um, and the negotiation of migrants back in their origin countries and in the destination country with regard to corruption and if that move has also changed their perception of, of corrupt practices. We're also interested here in uh, um, exploring the morality drain, the fact that maybe migrants who are unhappy with corrupt practices in their origin countries leave, only leaving those behind who are okay with the status quo. And so we're really digging into this idea of morality drain and, and many other areas. Migration and entrepreneurship, another key area for us. Um, here we're looking both at immigrant uh, entrepreneurship in the country of destination and return migrant entrepreneurship. Uh, here we look very much at occupational choice uh, within uh, whether or not you've arrived in the destination, the migrant has arrived in the destination country or upon return. And we also to some extent uh, are evaluating uh, re return programs and whether or not they're effective also in helping migrants get into uh, self-employment or entrepreneurship upon return. The eighth area for us is looking at the left behind or those who stay behind. So when migrants go abroad, they often leave family members, close friends behind. Here, for instance, we've had a very large project in Moldova and Georgia looking at the effects of a, a migrant household member or family member um, and how that affects the, the children and the elderly who would be often um, still cared for by the person who ha has left the, the household. And here we look at a range of, of variables uh, definitely looking at a multidimensional poverty approach, taking a very multidimensional stance here on education, health, more general well-being, and also psychosocial health in this area. Irregular migration and transit, another key area for us. Um, we do a lot of work now um, in key transit countries, so for instance, Turkey, Greece, um, Italy, where we know that a lot of migrants are transiting through. 
And we've also looked at irregular migration quite a bit um, in a European context, but not only. Uh, here we've done a lot of work on irregular Afghans, for instance, um, irregular unaccompanied minors coming to Europe, and as well as uh, transit through Europe more generally. Our final thematic area is on uh, labor migration and the highly skilled. And among other things, we've done a lot of work here on policies to attract the highly skilled and really what's effective in uh, policy making when we look at how highly skilled migrants choose where they're going to go in the future. And this doesn't only have to do with policy, but policy is an important component of this. And now with the global race for talent and uh, the you know kind of competitive environment for trying to attract the highly skilled, these are really important areas for evidence-based policy making. We also have two cross-cutting areas, um, which are both gender and methodological approaches. Our team takes both a quantitative and qualitative approach to our research areas, really depending on our, our research questions, and a mixed methodological approach is really important for us in the triangulation of our results. Now, everything we do here um, is really to go into evidence-based policy making, or that is our hope and our goal. The idea is that we set up a strong foundation of an evidence base that policy makers, practitioners, both within country governments, international organizations, NGOs, um, et cetera, et cetera, can also use when they're doing making their policy or programming areas. So that's what we're doing here at the Master Graduate School of Governance and you and you merit. Come visit our website for more details.